Today we're going to talk about cardiac valve regurgitation. Now before I get into details about what cardiac valve regurgitation means, first let's do a quick overview of how blood flows normally through the heart. So blood comes to your heart from your extremities through the vena cavae. Once it enters the heart, it will be in the right atrium here. Then the blood will travel to the right ventricle, up, out, through the pulmonary artery. This is called an artery because it's carrying your blood to the lungs. After the blood has been oxygenated, it returns to the heart through the pulmonary vein. Then your blood will be in the left atrium, travel down to the left ventricle, and out through the aorta. And from the aorta, your blood will go to the rest of your body to nourish and oxygenate it. So what makes sure that your blood keeps flowing in this direction? Well, in your heart, you have four valves. I've already drawn two of them here, but the ones that we are going to focus on today are the mitral valve, which is here and separates the left atrium from the left ventricle. And we are also going to talk about your aortic valve, which separates your left ventricle from your aorta. Now, it may seem confusing that you're looking at the right side of this image, and I'm calling it the left side of your heart, but you have to remember that this is how the heart would look if you were looking at someone standing right in front of you. But in fact, this is the left side of your heart. So what happens if these valves are not working properly? Well, we're, what we are going to discuss today is called mitral valve regurgitation. And as well, we are going to discuss aortic valve regurgitation. Both of these are similar in some ways, but they also have differences. So first, let's think about what regurgitation means in order for you to remember what is happening in your heart during cardiac valve regurgitation. So I'm sure you learned about when you were a child how baby birds feed their young. Remember that baby birds are at first too young to leave the nest and go look for food on their own. So what happens is that the mama bird goes out, flies down, finds a worm, chews it up, brings it back, and regurgitates it into her baby's mouths. So as you can see here, here is a mama bird, there are her waiting baby birds, and she'll regurgitate some chewed up worm or something like that into the baby's mouths. Remember, regurgitation means to rush back. So what is rushing back during mitral valve regurgitation and aortic valve regurgitation? Well, instead of the blood following the normal pathways that we outlined here, a little bit of blood, or sometimes a lot of blood, will rush back upwards in the wrong direction through these valves. So in this case of mitral valve regurgitation, what's happening is instead of all of the blood going from the left atrium to the left ventricle, a little bit of the blood will come back up into the left atrium. Similarly, with the aortic valve, during aortic valve regurgitation, instead of all of the blood going from the left ventricle up to the aorta through the aortic valve, some of the blood will go back out of the aorta and back into the left ventricle. And as you can imagine, this is quite problematic. So let's get into details. Let's start with the mitral valve. How does mitral valve regurgitation happen? Well, one cause of mitral valve regurgitation is scarring of the mitral valve. And this scarring will occur as a result of infectious endocarditis or less commonly rheumatic fever. And what happens is that these infections will cause damages to your mitral valve and scarring will develop and these scars prevent the mitral valve from closing properly. So the mitral valve is a valve composed of two leaflets, just like this, like I had drawn in the picture. Normally what happens in your heart is that when the blood enters the heart from the lungs, this mitral valve is closed. But as the blood accumulates, eventually the pressure of this blood causes your mitral valve to open, and when it opens, the blood is able to enter the left ventricle, as you can see here. But if there is scarring on 
your mitral valve instead of closing before the left ventricle pushes this blood back up to your aorta, what will happen is that your mitral valve will close partially, so maybe it'll close like all crooked, and some of that blood can leak back through into your left atrium again. So this can be caused by scarring because the scars can prevent that valve from closing properly. In addition, other conditions such as heart disease or if you had a heart attack in the past, that can also damage your mitral valve and possibly lead to mitral valve regurgitation. As well, some people have congenital heart defects which affect your mitral valve and these are heart defects that you were born with. And in some cases, mitral valve regurgitation is caused by mitral valve prolapse. Now, I showed you this normal picture of a mitral valve, but during mitral valve prolapse, part of the mitral valve will be flipped upwards. And again, this causes that improper regurgitation, that backflow of blood. How can a healthcare provider diagnose mitral valve regurgitation? Well, there aren't very many symptoms that are extremely specific to mitral valve regurgitation, but two of them include fatigue, and this is if the patient comes in, doesn't just say, you know, I didn't get that much sleep last night, I'm tired. They say that they feel very tired on a daily basis. Another symptom that they may have is difficulty breathing. And Again, this isn't just after a quick run. This is maybe every day they have difficulty breathing, although sometimes under strenuous exercise, this could also be a case. But ultimately, you need to do further examination or testing in order to determine if the patient has mitral valve regurgitation. When the doctor listens to the patient's heart, they'll likely hear a heart murmur. Remember that a heart murmur is not caused by the blood moving, but actually caused by the valves closing. So when your mitral valve is closing improperly, a heart murmur will be heard. Ultimately though, for a more conclusive diagnosis, a doctor will likely order an echocardiogram. An echocardiogram is basically a fancy term for a sonogram of the heart so that an image of the heart can be made and in fact this movement of blood and closing of the mitral valve can be witnessed on sonogram. So this is mitral valve regurgitation. Moving on, let's talk about aortic valve regurgitation. The aortic valve has three leaflets. So here you can only see two leaflets because of the nature of this two-dimensional drawing, but there are actually three leaflets here. It looks like a little peace sign, and what happens is that these leaflets will remain closed, but as blood fills up in this left ventricle, eventually the pressure of that blood will push the aortic valve open and allow the blood to rush out through the aorta. Once the left ventricle has emptied, then the aortic valve will close again and the process can continue. However, there are instances when the aortic valve is not working properly and this can cause aortic valve regurgitation. It can cause that blood to backflow back towards the left ventricle again, instead of all of it going out to the aorta. The causes of aortic valve regurgitation, congenital defects of the aortic valve, and there are a few of these, but perhaps one of the most common ones is that instead of having three leaflets in your aortic valve, you only have two. Just like with mitral valve regurgitation, infectious endocarditis can be a cause and this infectious endocarditis can damage the valve and cause things such as scarring and again that scar tissue will prevent the valve from closing properly and the blood will leak back towards the left ventricle. Also rheumatic disease can cause scarring but this is a less common factor in this day and age, but again, something that can still cause aortic valve regurgitation. Lastly, there are also a few diseases that affect the aortic root, 
and there are quite a few diseases involved in this and they cause many more symptoms beyond just cardiac issues but essentially the aortic root is this base structure here which forms your aorta and essentially holds this aortic valve together. So what symptoms are there of aortic valve regurgitation? The difficulty with aortic valve regurgitation is that you can't really base your diagnosis exclusively on symptoms that the patient will present because like mitral valve regurgitation, these are very broad. The patient may present with chest pain, which is a nonspecific diagnosis, or they may present with difficulty breathing. But as you saw above, difficulty breathing is also a symptom of mitral valve regurgitation. However, there are a few symptoms that are characteristic of aortic valve regurgitation, one of which is known as de Musset sign, and this one is quite unusual. It's head nodding with specifically with the systole beat. And so every single time the patient will be nodding their head because of this unusual flow of blood. Additionally, there's also Hill sign. And Hill sign is when the blood pressure of the lower extremities, the blood pressure of the legs, will be higher than the blood pressure of the arms, for example. That would be noticed on physical exam. So continuing on to the physical exam, the doctor will likely hear a heart murmur and this heart murmur will be high pitched and this is again caused by improper closing of the aortic valve. Just like in mitral valve regurgitation, to properly diagnose aortic valve regurgitation, an echocardiogram should take place. And this would allow you to see in full detail, is that aortic valve closing properly or not? And something else that you could see on this echocardiogram, which is characteristic of aortic valve regurgitation, is called left ventricular hypertrophy, which is essentially thickening of this walls here of this left ventricle. And if you think about it, this is caused by that blood flowing back into the left ventricle when it's not supposed to. So that left ventricle is having to work harder to pump it back out again. And that continued pressure causes the muscle wall to thicken. There are a few other types of cardiac valve regurgitation, but the two that we have discussed today, mitral valve regurgitation and aortic valve regurgitation, are very interesting and definitely something to consider when your patient presents with these cardiac symptoms.